All right, here we have yet another inequality. I'm trying to give you some different examples that have different types of solutions. So this one's going to be a little different than the others we've done so far. Um, our first step is to get zero on one side, everything else on the other. That's been done for us already. So our next job is to find the zeros. So we take our function, we set it equal to zero, and we solve. We would try to factor that, but it doesn't factor. So what we're going to do is use the quadratic formula. Again, that's negative b. It's good to have this memorized because we're going to use it a lot in this class. Minus 4, oh, excuse me, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. A, B, and C. A is the number in front of X squared. B is the number in front of X. And C is the number on the end. So here we go. We have negative 4 for our negative B plus or minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4 times A, which is 2, times C, which is negative 1, all over 2 times A, which was 2. I'm going to go ahead and simplify this. I'll try to go one step at a time as much as I can. Underneath the radical, 4 squared is 16, and 4 times 2 times 1 is 8. It's a positive because I had negative 4 times positive 2 is negative 8, times negative 1 makes that a positive 8. You want to watch your signs carefully. And 2 times 2 is 4. I go ahead and add the 16 plus the 8, and I get 24. So, so far, my answer is negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 24 over 4. Now, you would be able to plug these into a calculator and find out what the decimal numbers are for the purpose of knowing where you're testing. They're going to want exact answers. So, we want to simplify this, and this might be kind of out in left field for you, but it is a skill. We need to simplify the square root of 24. And so, what you do is take out any square root you can. Notice that 24 is the same as 4 times 6, and so we can take the square root of 4. It is 2. So we take the square root of 4 and get 2 on the outside of the radical. The 6 has to stay because it doesn't have a perfect square root. Now we're going to simplify this a little bit. Okay, again, if I'm going too fast, you can always pause in the middle. It's hard without students to slow me down. Okay. Um, I can reduce this because 2 goes into every term. So I get negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 6 all over 2. So there you have your answers. Now remember our next job, these are our zeros, negative 2 plus the square root of 6 over 2 and negative 2 minus the square root of 6 over 2. Our next job was to put those on a number line and test the intervals. So I'm going to use my calculator to find each value so that I can actually test the interval. So again, you do negative 2 minus root 6 divided by 2. You should get about negative 2.2. And then we do the other. That would be negative 2 plus the square root of 6 divided by 2. And that gives me about 0 0.22 when I do that one. Okay, and I know these are ugly numbers, but the cool thing about intervals is you can pick any number on that interval. So just because we have decimal answers doesn't mean we have to pick decimal numbers. I can pick any number in the interval, so anything less than negative 2, say negative 3, anything between negative 2.2 and positive 0.22, say 0, would work, and anything bigger than 0.22, which 1 would work for that. I put them into my original equation up here, okay? So first let's test negative 3. Okay, we replace all the x's with negative 3, 
and go from there. Negative 3 squared is 9, positive 9, and 9 times 2 is 18. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, minus 1. We get positive 5, so this interval is positive. Let's try 0. If we put 0, we get 0 plus 0 minus 1. 0 squared is 0 times 2 is 0. 4 times 0 is 0. Minus 1, we get negative for this interval. And let's do our 1 for our last interval. We have 2 times 1 squared plus 4 times 1. Again, I'm just plugging this, these values into our original function up here. Um, 1 squared is 1, times 2 is 2, 4 times 1 is 4, minus 1, 2, plus 4 minus 1 is a positive 5. So there you have it. There are intervals. We have a positive, negative, positive. Then we have to go back up to see which ones we want to keep and which we want to reject. This wanted our x's to be greater than 0 or positive. So our answers are going to be this interval here and this interval here. When we write our answer down, we're going to want to use our exact answers with the roots in them rather than our decimals. Okay? We only did decimals so we could tell where our intervals were. So our answer, I'm going to put in green here, is from negative infinity to negative 2 minus root 6 over 2. Union with or attached with negative 2 plus root 6 over 2 to infinity. This would be our correct answer. Oh, kind of crazy and complex, but there you have it. All right, here is the last one, and this is kind of a higher level problem. What do you do when they mix absolute values and quadratics? <laughs> you get a big crazy mess is what you get. So we have to do everything we would do for absolute value problems, inequalities, and everything we would do for quadratic inequalities. First, we have to take care of the whole absolute value. So we look at it, and it says x squared is less than or the absolute value is greater than or more. What do we do when we, the absolute value is more than the other value? We have an or, so we set up our two problems, okay, our positive um, option and our negative option. So x squared is less than or equal to 3x plus 10, or negative x squared, don't forget to flip the sign here, is greater than or equal to 3x plus 10. We are going to solve both of these quadratic problems. So now we have to go through all the steps for a quadratic we have to get it equal to zero, or not equal to, but get zero on one side, everything else on the other. So this first one, I'm going to subtract 3x and subtract 10 from both sides so that I have zero. And then I try to solve that, okay, so they have my zeros. If this would factor, that would just be fabulous. It would save a lot of time and work. Are there factors of negative 10 that add to equal negative 3? is our question here. There are. If I do negative 5 and a positive 2, negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. Negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. We set each of those equal to 0 and solve. And we get x is 5 and x is negative 2. We take those numbers, put them on a number line, and test each interval. So anything less than negative 2, let's say we did negative 3. Anything between them, 0 would be easiest, and anything bigger would be 6. We plug each of those test values in to find out whether the interval is positive or negative for each one. If I put negative 3 in there, I get negative 3 squared minus 3 times negative 3 minus 10. That gives me 9 plus 9 minus 10, which is a positive answer. If we put 0, we get 0 squared minus 3 times 0 minus 10, or 0 minus 10, which gives us a 
negative in the center here. I'm guessing the 6 is going to give us a positive result because that would make sense for our quadratic. But we'll test it anyways just to make sure we didn't make mistakes somewhere. Okay, um, that gives me 36 minus 18 minus 10. So 36 minus 28 would be positive. We then look at our problem to see which we wanted. We wanted our values to be our x is to be less than or equal to 0. So we want our negative result, which was this portion here between negative 2 and 5. So, so far for my ors, I have from negative 2 to 5, including them, because it wants it or equal to. Now we get to go over and solve this problem over here. So, we start all over with our quadratics. The first thing that we have to do is get it 0 on one side, everything else on the other. So, I'm going to add an x squared to both sides, the inequality. We get x squared plus 3x plus 10. Are there factors of positive 10 that add to equal positive 3? We could try 2 and 5 again, but we can't get a combination of them that would multiply to be positive 10 and add to be a positive 3, which means we're going to have to use the quadratic formula here to find our zeros. I'll do it up here. We'd have negative 3, our b, plus or minus the square root of 3 squared, minus 4, times a is 1, times c is 10, all over 2 times a, which is 1. Under the radical, we get 9 minus 4 times 1, excuse me, times 10 is negative 40 over 2. Well, what happens there if we do 9 minus 40? Uh-oh. We get a negative under the radical. We can't do the square root of a negative number, so this is going to give us no real zeros. Okay? So our only solution for this problem is going to be the section from negative 2 to positive 5. I'll rewrite it here so it looks a little more clear. Now, had we had real answers, we would have had to gone back and done <clears throat> like we did on this problem here. Now, remember how we did that one? My clean screen's been cleared, but we had to find the decimal numbers and set up our intervals and still test them. So you may have a problem where you have to do that. But there are some examples of solving quadratic inequalities and absolute value inequalities.